Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from a very intriguing region known as the Zone of Avoidance. The region that you can kind of see in this video right here. But what exactly is it, and why is it called that, and what exactly did the scientists discover? And the reason why it's called the Zone of Avoidance is kind of intriguing. During the early astronomy days in the 18th and 19th century, as the astronomers started to discover a lot of new objects in the night skies, they started to notice all sorts of different type of nebula, like the one you see right there. And these were actually pretty common everywhere, and they started to be described by a lot of different studies. But some of these nebula had very specific shapes. They became known as the spiral nebula. Mostly because they had an unusual spiral shape, and there were quite a lot of them discovered during those early astronomy days, and they were pretty much all over the place, no matter where you looked, except for one area. Roughly around 10 degrees of night skies were completely devoid of any spiral nebula. Other types of nebula were still present here, but not the spiral ones. And so because of this, some of the early astronomers in the 19th century started to refer to this as the zone of avoidance. For some reason, there were no spiral nebula in that particular region. And if you know anything about the history of astronomy, you probably already figured out why. These unusual spiral nebula that the scientists were seeing were actually something that looked like this. They were not nebula at all, they were galaxies. But it wasn't until the late 1920s, or even more like 1930s, that the scientists finally realized that the universe was much, much bigger than we ever thought, and that essentially each of these spiral nebula were actually individual galaxies with their own nebula on the inside. This was actually following something known as the Great Debate that happened roughly around 100 years ago, and you can learn more about it in the video in the description. And so essentially the zone of avoidance did not have any galaxies present in it. And eventually the scientists realized why. They were most likely there, but they were just invisible to us because of a huge amount of dust hiding all of them. And that's because that particular region is literally the center of our galaxy. The region that you see right here, where quite a lot of dust is present right in the middle of the Milky Way and is essentially hiding pretty much everything behind it. It's a little bit easier to visualize it right here, in these images created by various surveys, with this whole region representing almost like a wall of dust hiding almost everything behind it. Which is also why this region has always been so mysterious, because it does seem to hide quite a lot of intriguing stuff. But naturally, it's really only invisible to us in the optical light. It starts to appear a little bit different in the infrared and a lot of other frequencies, including of course radio light, which suddenly uncovers quite a lot of stuff we were not able to see before. And so in the last few decades, the scientists did start to make some discoveries, finding certain objects hiding here, and even finding objects that were behind our galaxy in that particular direction. And that's actually precisely what the scientists want to study. They really want to kind of see through this and try to find out what's actually hiding behind it millions or even billions of light years away from us. And one of the most important reasons why the scientists want to do so can be seen in this image. This is also where the mysterious Great Attractor is located, which seems to represent the most gravitationally potent area, attracting everything in the vicinity and making everything, including the Milky Way, moving toward that point. At the moment, nobody knows what it is, what's creating all of this gravitational attraction, or why all of the millions of galaxies are actually moving toward this point, but by being able to see through the zone avoidance, we might be able to finally solve this mystery. And so, in the last few decades, the scientists have been finding new ways to try to see through this, to try to peer through all of this dust, and to actually discover new objects. And because approximately 10 to 20% of the entire night skies is hidden behind all of this, it's actually one of the most exciting areas to study. And some of the first breakthroughs were made by the Italian Paolo Maffei, who used one of the first infrared surveys to discover two galaxies. Back then, he was one of the most famous astronomers slash astrophysicists and definitely laid the foundation for how the scientists would then look for new objects using very similar techniques. And so he discovered two galaxies, they're now known as Maffei 1 and Maffei 2, both of which are only visible in the infrared and both of which are basically in the zone of avoidance. For example, in this image by NASA, you can even barely see it, visible as a tiny, tiny galaxy on the bottom. And the pioneering techniques from Paolo Maffei eventually led to a lot of new discoveries and of course the propositions for bigger infrared telescopes, including eventually James Webb that we have right now. Although even in the infrared light, there is still quite a lot of noise here and a lot of things are still hidden from the view. And that's actually because there are also a lot of other objects, including various stars, 
that create a problem when telling things apart. It's actually kind of difficult to tell if something is close to us or far away. But the later surveys decided to do something different. They also used radio emissions, or basically radio wavelengths, the wavelengths that can easily see through most of the dust in a galaxy, to try to discover even more distant objects by, for example, looking at the hydrogen line, also known as 21 cm emission line, which in the process did discover more galaxies. Or two galaxies, Dwingaloo 1 and Dwingaloo 2. These were almost invisible in the infrared light and were only detected later on after the scientists were able to identify them using radio frequencies. And because some of these galaxies were actually really massive and really big, the fact that they are invisible to us makes this area extremely exciting to study. Because essentially every single discovery here becomes kind of groundbreaking and takes us a little bit closer to being able to see through all of this at some point. And thus of course maybe one day answering the question of what exactly is the Great Attractor. But after decades and decades of almost no discoveries, the scientists finally made a really big one. They've discovered something really really far away hidden behind our galaxy, something that seems to represent an extremely massive structure, the most massive structure ever detected in this region. A structure containing several galaxies and potentially up to 58 galaxies, which seems to be the largest galactic cluster discovered in the last few years, and discovered using a really complex analysis involving several infrared telescopes, with the first one an extremely detailed triple V survey being the one responsible for discovering an unusually high intensity region that was surprisingly located in the zone of avoidance, previously unseen by anything and completely unexplained until recently. And once the scientists realized that there is something going on here, they used additional observations from other infrared telescopes, confirming five separate galaxies, all at the same distance and all connected gravitationally, but also eventually realizing that there could be up to 58 galaxies here, making this essentially a galactic cluster. Something that we obviously have seen many times before in other regions, but something that would make it the first such object detected in a zone of avoidance. And that of course is a really important discovery because of that mystery of the Great Attractor. By being able to detect this object, and by being able to analyze it directly, discovering the distance and the total mass of this structure, and by essentially revealing all of these galaxies that were previously invisible to us, Using a completely new analysis and a completely new technique, it takes us a step closer to now being able to possibly see what's hiding in the Great Attractor region and thus figure out what actually is causing all of this gravitational attraction. And naturally, with the James Webb telescope also being operational and being the most powerful infrared telescope we have right now, it's really only in the matter of time before the scientists get enough data from this region and start making incredible discoveries of things that were completely invisible to us up until this year. With new infrared observations, we're going to be able to discover so many new objects we didn't know existed. And since this is 10% or even up to 20% of the night skies, it means that there could be quite a lot of intriguing things hiding here and potentially things that we never expected. But I guess for now, what makes this particular discovery special is that it kind of doubles the number of galaxies we've discovered in the zone of avoidance. It went from being 4 to now being 9, but potentially a lot more assuming that all those 58 galaxies become confirmed at some point as well. Which also means that this could be a completely new era of astronomy with so many new incredible discoveries to come in the next few years. And so until those new discoveries or until we find something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.